All right, good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. My name is Aaron Houghton, and I am excited to welcome you to what is the uh, first, I think the first event on the entire schedule for Boulder Startup Week this week. So this is uh, one of my favorite weeks of the year here in Boulder, and i um, so excited to be starting it off with all of you. So what I'm gonna share this morning is my morning priming routine. So I do this almost every morning. If I'm really disciplined, it's every morning myself. And uh, since the pandemic started in, uh, in mid-March, I've been sharing my morning prime session live with people on my Facebook page. And so I'm sharing it here uh, with all of you and we're gonna go through this together in Zoom. So thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm going to, um, so myself and my good friend Finian Kelly are gonna lead us through a couple of exercises today. Finn, if you could just wave to everybody and uh, we'll come back to you in, in a second. Thank you so much for being here. So I do Morning Prime um, myself. This is my personal practice, so thanks for coming and joining for this. I do Morning Prime to get my mind and my body calm, positive, and prepared as I start the day. And um, this has been a really important part of my practice as an entrepreneur for um, about four or five years now. And it's something that I learned from so many high performers in entrepreneurship and in other areas um, like military elite and Olympic athletes. Um, they use very similar disciplines in the morning to start uh, to kind of set the groundwork for their mind and their body for the day. So we'll lead some of these. This takes just about 15 minutes. We may run a little bit over today just because we're going to have some fun doing this live. Um, and so thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm just going to read a quick statement um, for our founders at Boulder Startup Week. So um, this event runs because of all the great sponsors that we have. So thank you to all the headline level sponsors and folks that make this event happen every year. Even when it's virtual, it's still a, a mass effort with a, an army of volunteers and sponsors supporting it. Um, the health track this year at Boulder Startup Week is actually, I'll give you a disclaimer, it's sponsored by the company I work for. So it's a little weird that I'm reading the uh, call out for this company, but um, let me just share it with you. So thank you to the health track sponsor, Founders First System. Founders First System is a simple framework that helps entrepreneurs stay healthy and happy while they build their companies and change the world. We've been using frameworks to optimize our companies for years. This is the first framework for optimizing founders themselves. Uh, join the conversation by becoming a member of the Founders First community. It's community.foundersfirstsystem.com or by searching for the Founders First community app in the iOS or Android store, uh, store on your smartphone. So thank you to my good folks at Founders First for helping sponsor our session today. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So this is an interactive session. Um, as I mentioned before, this is my morning priming session. So thanks for coming along for the ride. Let's go ahead and start with um, in the calm category. I'm gonna start with just a couple of breaths and then we're gonna go into um, a positivity activity. So go ahead and get somewhere where you can be comfortable with your feet flat on the floor. Uh, sit comfortably in a seat or if you're laying down, that's fine too. Somewhere where you feel comfortable sitting up straight and closing your eyes to kind of come out of the environment around you into your mind and your body. And 10 clearing breaths are as simple as it sounds, but this is a technique that I like to use um, even in my own business before starting a team meeting or before getting on a call um, or when changing context from one thing to another during the day to just kind of try and let go of everything that I uh, took on as baggage from whatever happened before and, and get a reset before the next event. So go ahead and close your eyes. Let's do our first breath in together. Breathe, uh, a clearing breath is kind of a breath in at a medium pace. We're gonna hold it at the top for a half second, and then we're gonna release it by just letting everything go. So breathe in, hold the top, and let it out. Breathe in again. Breathe out. Third breath in. On the breath out, it's like, it's not a forceful release. This is really just like letting, like a balloon has been popped, just letting all the air flow out and trying to, you know, on the breath in, we can raise our shoulders up and then on the breath out, just letting them drop, letting them fall, don't push them down. We're gonna practice that just release of tension and release of anything that we're holding on to. So fourth breath in, hold for a half second, let it out. Fifth breath in, release. Breathe in, 
that release. Uh, breath seven in. Eight in. There's two more. Nine in. Don't think about or worry about the sound your breath's making. You all are on mute now. You're just hearing me. Um, so, you know, don't worry about it in general when you do this activity. Do this in a space where you can be private or share this with a group and everyone can do it together. And uh, you don't want to really restrict anything on the out breath. You just want to let it go and whatever noise it makes, that's okay. Let's do our last breath in. All right, take just uh, 15 seconds to observe yourself in this moment. Is there anything different about your mind or your body from when you started? Do you feel more calm? Do you feel more relaxed? Do you feel more tense? Maybe it didn't work, that's okay. <laughs> Hopefully you feel a bit of calm, a bit of relaxation. That's what most people share. All right, let's go on to the second activity today, which is around positivity. And this is uh, gratitude journaling. We're gonna do about three or four minutes here. And if you've got a sheet of paper and a pen or pencil in front of you, I recommend that. If not, you can do it in your head. And um, if you've got a smartphone or device or a laptop, well, you probably have a laptop or phone in front of you. <laughs> um, I would recommend, I don't know, maybe not doing it in, in, uh, on that device. Our devices are so distracting, but if you can do that without getting distracted, that's a, a good way to do it too. And so we're going to journal some things that, uh, that come to mind in this process. Um, if you don't have something to write on, that's fine. You can just do it in your head. That's how I do it when I'm leading these sessions. And so we'll follow along together. So gratitude journaling is just about taking a moment to discover the things that we're grateful for in our lives. Uh, it can be easy to lose sight and context of these things sometimes. So um, what I want you to do, go ahead and um, take a breath in. Uh, let's get back to centered again. And if you're just doing this in your head, you can go ahead and close your eyes while you're doing it as well. And I want you to start with the category of people that you're grateful for. See if you can come up with two or three names of people that are impacting your life right now, maybe during this pan time of pandemic, or maybe just in general, the most important people that you have in your life that give value to you, or maybe you give value to them and you feel that connection through the trade-off of value in that relationship. You're both valuable to each other. See if you can come up with two or three names. And then now as you're doing that, I want you to, next to each name, write just one or two words that encompasses what this relationship or what this person means to you. Could be just, you know, the event you like to do or the activity you like to do with this person. Maybe it's uh, here in Colorado, a mountain biking buddy or a skiing buddy or a running friend um, could be just somebody that's in your life and family, could be just somebody who's a friend that you like to make dinner together when we're able to be in person <laughs> or maybe over Zoom with each other now. See if you can tag one or two words for each person and remind yourself what a gift this relationship is that you have. Most people in relationships in our lives don't have to be part of that relationship. So they're choosing to be a part of this relationship and to stay in this relationship with you, however formal or informal it is. It could be co-founders, it could be team members at your business, it could be your investors. Anybody love their investors? Some people do. I liked my investors. <laughs> Let's uh, see if you can come up with at least one or two words for each person that share why they're so valuable to you.
All right, nice work. I'm going to transition over to my good friend, Finian Kelly now. He is a breathwork master. He's an incredible entrepreneur here in Boulder. If you have, uh, you may have attended some of his events up at Star House, and I think you guys actually have an event. Is it tomorrow, Finn? Um, yeah. A virtual event. So we do. Anyway, I'll hand it over to Finn to lead us on our next exercise. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, awesome start to the week. I'm so proud of all of you for showing up. So what I want to share with you is just some more breathing techniques. The breath is this incredible tool which we can use to ground us and center us at any time. When you think about it, it's one of the few modalities in our body where it's a both a unconscious act. We breathe without really thinking that often, and then we can use it consciously to really empower us. And it's probably our greatest life force we have. So I want to start with a technique called box breathing. Uh, it's also called square breathing as well. It incorporates breath holding with inhales and exhales. The benefit of this is it strengthens mental focus and also our powers of concentration. So think before you're about to go into a strategy session, thinking about coding, whatever you need, it can be really powerful there. It also really balances our energy and nervous systems as well. So the format for this breath is a inhale for four seconds, then a hold for four seconds, and then an exhale for four seconds, and then a hold for four seconds making sure that you don't tense your body or um, really just letting it all go. Just it's almost like an open pause. So we'll do this together. So just, and you can have your eyes closed or eyes open, whatever works for you. So just getting centered, feet on the ground, letting all your air out and then breathing in two, three, four, hold two, three, four, out, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, hold, just keep on relaxing, out, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. So just coming back into the body, just noticing for a few seconds, just how you feel right now. It's happening in your body. It's happening in your head. I love using this before I get into a meditation. It just really drops me into that beautiful alpha state. Where I'm more relaxed and then I can have a deeper meditation as well. One more breath I want to teach you is a beautiful way just to remind you that we have different elements of ourself. We have the personality, we have the soul, and then we have this, this feeling of connection to all. So what this one is, is a really big heart opening exercise. The modern day leader, we need to be heartfelt leaders. That's where the world is heading right now. And the more we can get connected to our heart, the better decisions we'll make, which will in turn get better results for our companies, ourselves, and also our team members. So in this breath, it's a series of three breaths. And what we're really doing is focusing on breathing up from the lower abdomen and then bringing it up into that upper up abdomen, up into that heart space felt area. And we're going to hold it there with an intention. And I'll be guiding you through this. So letting out all of your air, 
and then breathing in, breathing in that feeling of the personality, holding the breath up the top of the heart and just feeling that per personality, that individual, that you, the person who has goals, who has desires, holding it in the heart and then letting it all out on a passive exhale. This time breathing in the soul, the internal, the thing which lasts, it's ongoing. Holding it in the heart, feeling that expansion and letting it all out, exhale. This time breathing in, feeling the connection of the oneness, the connection to all, that feeling of spirit, holding it up there, feeling that spirit in your heart. Whatever you believe, there is a feeling that there's something greater than, than just us, holding it there and then letting it out. And finally, we're going to integrate all three on this final breath. So a big breath in, feeling that feeling of the individual, the personality, the soul, the eternal, and then the spirit, that feeling of connection, that feeling of oneness with all, holding it in the heart, really feeling all those three and integrating all three of them at once and understanding that your role is to play all three of them throughout each day. Do not get caught up in the personality. And then letting it all go. Beautiful. So these two breaths you can pull together any time of the day. I use box breathing just to ground me regularly. And when I find myself going into a place where I'm concerned about my own issues, I'm going into a scarcity mindset, I'm thinking about fear, I bring that beautiful heartfelt breath back in. And it just reminds me that there's something more than just me. And when I realize that, I come such a better leader. Have a wonderful day. Keep being intentional and keep priming with Aaron. He's a great leader. Thanks, Finian. That was fantastic. So just uh, two seconds on, on my personal story. So I've been an entrepreneur for 20 years, started 11 companies, built most of them on, on the East Coast before moving to Boulder. And I've, through that process, while well, running my companies and even after a big exit that I had in 2012, have struggled with anxiety and with, depress with depression and um, those mood swings that I think so many of us as entrepreneurs experience from really, really high highs where we create and design and we you know, envision the future and we get excited about it to self-judging and self-torturing afterwards when you know, looking at everything that I've created and struggling to um, try and understand why I thought it was even brilliant in the moment. And so um, the activities we've done so far around breathing, 10 clearing breaths and box breathing and the three breath technique that Finn just shared, um, as well as gratitude journaling have been really helpful tools for me the breath work to manage my calm, to get to calm and, and manage my, my anxiety before I start my activities during the day. And then gratitude journaling to try and pull me out of that downswing towards depression and bring me back up to centered mood again when I'm starting to be hard on myself and admittedly hard on others in those moments as well. So I wanna wrap us up today with a top three list for our week. This is in the preparation category for thinking about how we can um, get ourselves um, prepared for what is coming this week and really focused on the things that matter most. So if you're journaling on paper, go ahead and grab your paper again. If you're just journaling in your head, that's fine. Go ahead and grab your head. No, don't really grab your head. Just <laughs> prepare to get started. And um, yeah, if you're thinking this through in your head, just go ahead and um, sit still and close your eyes again. If you're journaling on paper, obviously you can keep your eyes open. And I want you to think about all the possible things you could work on as you're starting or over this week. So we're starting our week today. It's Monday. There's so much possibility ahead of us. We have hours committed to solve problems and to work on projects this week. And there are a lot of different things we could choose to spend our time, our precious time and our precious energy on. So start brainstorming some possibilities of things that you could work on. They don't have to be the right things. Just what comes to mind? Where do you want to spend your time? Sometimes as entrepreneurs, it's easy to go towards the things that we 
want to work on instead of the things that are important, but that's fine. Let's get them out on paper. What might you work on? What could be interesting to work on? What's maybe important to work on? What are other people relying on you to produce for them? Where are people waiting on you? Where are you waiting on other people where you can't start certain things yet? And that's fine too. See if you can come up with just kind of one word for each. Seven, eight, nine, maybe 10. There's so many things on our plate at any given time. So let's be honest to that and put them down on paper. It's okay for there to be so many things. We're gonna go through a practice here in just a minute to narrow down to what we need to work on. All right, if you've got a couple down now, go ahead and start thinking through the filter of what is important for this week. If you're sitting now on Friday evening and getting ready to enjoy the weekend, the stay at home orders here in Colorado have ended and here in Boulder, they just ended on Saturday. So this is a great time to maybe get outside again and return to a lot of the routines we have. And so as we're starting that weekend routine, we've got this great list built of things we could work on during the week. What would we feel so excited to have accomplished during the week? I want you to circle as many things that, that kind of meet that criteria for you. So what would make you just absolutely thrilled to look back at this list and say, you know, man, that's awesome. I could tear up these items, boom, toss them out, they're done, problem solved, and I've accomplished these things. I feel really good about it, and I feel prepared to just relax and take back time for myself on the weekend. So go ahead and circle a couple, and it doesn't have to be one or two, it could be all of them, whatever, as many as you would feel really excited about completing and now I want you to go back <clears throat> just among the items that you've circled <clears throat> and I want you to double circle any ones that are really important. So these are important ones that, you know, maybe things that you've been sitting on. I'm a perpetual procrastinator myself. So maybe these are things that you're um, maybe feeling guilty about not getting done. It's just important because you owe them to somebody else. Somebody else is waiting on you. There's a contingency around it and you're the bottleneck. That's okay. I'm the bottleneck in several projects right now as well. We all are at some times. And think about which ones would be so important for, uh, which ones align to your goals, maybe for this month or this week or this quarter or for this year. They could be personal goals. They could be business goals. There's no wrong way to be focused. I do like to suggest that we stay balanced to some degree between these personal goals and keep all of our identities outside of being an entrepreneur very healthy as well. So husband, father, son, friend, advisor, skier, mountain biker, volunteer, whatever these identities are in your life, think about, make sure you've got some here that align to those identities as well. So double circle or add a second circle around those first circles for the ones and see if you can get to just three that are that would feel really exciting to have completed but also are important and would make a difference towards moving you towards your goals personally or in your business All right, hopefully you've got a good top three list of things that are important to work on this week. And uh, if you've done it on paper, um, I definitely like to kick it old school from time to time and just tape that sheet of paper up above my laptop on the wall so I remember it and come back to it during the week. Um, some people go as far as actually blocking time on their schedule. So if you look at your calendar for this week, um, find holes in between. Uh, our schedules can often be dominated by just things that have come up, right? Meetings, people have requested to get in touch, different events. Um, we block out times for certain professional things, but sometimes we don't block out times for ourselves. And it's a losing strategy, in my opinion, to book work on the calendar and expect to take care of ourselves in the cracks in between. So um, you can go as far as taking a one hour or two hour block or a couple of them on your schedule this week and dropping those top three items in there just to make sure that you really have time to be focused on moving things forward, that you wanna move forward. 
So that's it. Thank you so much for joining us. This morning prime routine that I do every day is all about getting my mind calm, positive, and prepared. And we pull tools in each of those categories. So thank you so much for being here. And um, before we hop off, if uh, what I would love to do is let's uh, take advantage of the fact that we're virtual here and do a little uh, chat, comment, share. So go ahead and pull up the chat box in Zoom. And just, um, I don't know, let's do something fun. Let's answer the question, uh, when do you think uh, the next time you'll be on an airplane? <laughs> I'd love to just get a read from this group. Um, how are you feeling about the whole situation we're in right now? When will you be on an airplane next? Let's see, all right. Marcy said August, Michael said July, September, three to four months, <laughs> fall at the earliest. Yeah, I mean, flights are still moving. I talked to an entrepreneur who flew from Denver to Seattle the other day. Um, and you know, I thought, wow, that's, I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> five, Jay said 521, Jay apparently has a flight booked <laughs> next week. All right, nice. Yeah, I think this is a really interesting time and probably um, more important than ever to continue to be in this routine of being grounded as there's so much uncertainty right now, right? We've got folks flying in 10 days and we've got folks that don't think they'll fly again until the fall. Um, and those are very different experiences. Um, Jay's going fishing. All right, nice work, buddy. <laughs> I love it. All right, everybody, thank you so much for being here today. Um, I've got a panel actually at 10 a.m. today about the founder mental health crisis. So if you'd uh, like what you saw here and you wanna hear a much deeper discussion about the problem that's plaguing all of us, please come see us and uh, on Zoom at uh, 10 o'clock. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks so much.